Do you ever get jealous of your friends who are sharing files with their Apple AirDrop, but you can't because you are using a Linux machine or Windows machine or an Android phone? In this video, we will look at wirelessly sharing files between all kinds of devices running different operating systems. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so you can be part of the empire of love. AirDrop on the Apple ecosystem is one of the best inventions ever. You can instantly share photos, videos, basically any kind of file with another device quickly and easily. And it all works wirelessly between phones and computers, so you don't have to use an intermediary USB thumb drive or Dropbox or local file share. The only requirement is that everyone who is sharing needs to be using an Apple product. So to use AirDrop on your computer, all you need to do is open a Finder window, then use the shortcut of Shift Command R, or just type in AirDrop in the search bar over here. And once you are in AirDrop, you will be asked to turn on your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if they are not already on. Once your network connections are turned on, you will start to see all the other Apple devices nearby who also have AirDrop turned on. You actually don't need to be connected to any network. To share a file with someone, all you need to do is find the file you want to share, either on your iPhone, your iPad, or your computer. In this example, I have a picture on my phone that I want to share with my friend. So as I'm looking at the file, I click on the sharing symbol here on the bottom of the screen. Then I get a bunch of options of sharing with some of the latest entities I have shared with. So in my example, I have a group that I've been chatting with in the Messages app. Hence, you see the small messages icon and then the initials or icons of the people. In the next row here, you can see some common apps that you can share. So AirDrop, Messages, Instagram, etc. I'm going to go ahead and click on AirDrop. The next panel that pops up shows the names of the people you can share with. And this depends on your settings on who you can share with. So it's either people in your contact list, everyone, or no one. So go ahead and click on the person you want to share with. And on their machine, they will get an alert that someone wants to airdrop them something. And they have an option to accept or decline. I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. And then the transferred file will be found in the downloads folder. It's Apple stuff, so it's easy and it just works. Now that's all fine for those of us who drank the Kool-Aid and went all in on the Apple ecosystem. But for those rebels who don't want to be tied down because they want something else, you're out of luck. Samsung phones can transfer to each other using their own proprietary protocol like QuickShare, but that only works between Samsung devices, so it's not a great solution for everyone. But here comes SnapDrop. This transfer method allows anyone with any device that has a browser to transfer files to anyone else on any device that has a web browser. The main requirement is that all the devices need to be on the same network and connected to the internet. In this first demo, I have a file on my Linux machine that I want to transfer to my MacBook Pro. They are both on my office network. So on my Linux machine, I launch a browser and type in the URL of HTTPS colon slash slash snapdrop.net. And you will see an icon of a machine on the bottom of the page. This is the Linux machine, and it's the temporary name of Azure Bobolink for the sake of SnapDrop. And now if we go to my MacBook Pro and also type in the URL of snapdrop.net, into a browser window, I see an icon with a machine name on the bottom, and this machine is named Violet Zurine. I don't even know how to say that. But again, it's just a temporary name for this particular machine. And then in this case, we also see another machine name on top. What we see here is the name of our Linux machine, which is Azure Bubblelink. Now, if we look back at our Linux machine, we see that the name of the Mac is now visible on the browser. So to transfer a file from the Linux machine, we just need to click on the name of the machine that you want to transfer to. I only have one client, that's pretty simple. Use the pop-up browser to manipulate to the proper directory, and then select the file I want to transfer. 
On the Mac, we now see a pop-up panel that tells us a file has been transferred. And on the bottom of this pop-up, we can select whether we want to automatically download files. Uh, the choice is yours to make, whether you want to have the convenience of not having to accept every incoming file, or the security of allowing you to review the incoming files before saving it onto your machine. Anyways, the resulting file is in the downloads folder of the logged in user. So in this case, the snap drop program was pretty smart since I already had a file in my downloads folder named AVML. It automatically renamed it to AVML-2 so it doesn't overwrite existing files. Pretty straightforward and easy. In my second demo, I'm going to shoot a video on my iPhone and then transfer it over to my Linux machine where I'm going to process the video with FFmpeg. So I open up a Safari tab on my iPhone, type in the HTTPS colon slash slash snapdrop.net. Now I see two machines, my Mac with the Safari browser open and then my Ubuntu machine with Firefox open. So I click on Violet Zurine, which is my Mac. And from the menu, I can select items from my photo library. I can take a photo or video, or I can choose something from files. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and select take a photo or video. Now my camera opens up and I can go ahead and shoot a quick video. And when I'm done, the file is automatically sent over to my Linux machine through Snapdrop. And then come over to the Linux machine and I get a choice to save the file or display it with VLC. In this case, let's just go ahead and watch the video. Oh, look at my little puppy. Snapdrop.net is a great alternative to AirDrop when you have machines which are not part of the Apple ecosystem. Just remember that the machines that want to be part of the data transfer must be joined to the same network, which also needs to be connected to the internet. I try to do this with setting up a local network of my machines without an internet access, and that did not work. And I also tried to connect the machines via a hotspot, which also didn't seem to work. I use this quite a bit when I have some files on my Windows box that I want to transfer to my Linux box. Instead of plugging in a thumb drive or setting up an intermediary like Dropbox, I can just transfer files from one file system to the other wirelessly. For more videos related to networking, see these videos here. To roll the dice and have YouTube select something interesting, click here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.